This is Dr. Bradley Nelson. I would like to welcome you to our webinar today, Helping Panic Attacks with the Emotion Code and the Body Code. You can see the picture that I chose here was the, uh, the screen by Edward Munch, which I thought was appropriate for today. Let's take a look. Well, how big of a problem is this really? Anxiety disorders affect about 40 million adults. And panic disorders affect about 6 million Americans, about 1 in 50, which is a, quite a lot of people. And uh, it's twice as common in women as in men. Typically, these, uh, these problems begin in late adolescence. And another interesting thing is that the tendency to develop panic attacks appears to be inherited. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. Uh, now, oftentimes panic attacks and anxiety disorders are uh, accompanied with other disorders such as depression and drug abuse or alcoholism. And a lot of that is people trying to medicate themselves for their issues. So if you look at this, these graphs, 2.7% of the U.S. adult population suffers from panic attacks or panic disorder. And 44% uh, of those cases, or about 1.2%, are classified as, as really severe. Uh, as far as the, uh, the percent of the adult population here uh, for lifetime prevalence, or in other words, uh, people who are dealing with this for as long as they can remember, uh, you can see how it breaks down age-wise. 4.4% is uh, from 18 to 29 years old, and then it rises to 5.7% from 30 to 44, and then a little bit higher from 45 to 59. And then people that are 60 plus seem to have uh, seem to have a, a less uh, a lesser uh, amount. So if we look at the cost of anxiety disorders, uh, the United States uh, they cost more than 42 billion dollars a year. It's calculated about uh, one third. Let's hold on a second here. About one third of the 148 billion dollar total mental health bill is due to these disorders and about 22 billion dollars are used up in repeat services so people going back to the uh, back to the ER and so on uh, over and over again so I wanted to talk for a moment about the difference between panic attacks and anxiety panic attack symptoms uh, are a little different the symptoms are sudden and, and extremely intense and these symptoms usually occur out of the blue they usually peak within about 10 minutes and then subside However, some attacks may last longer or may occur in succession, making it difficult to determine when one attack ends and another begins. And according to the, uh, the DSM, uh, which is the, uh, the Diagnostic Manual of Psychiatric Disorders, the uh, panic, attack, uh, panic attacks are characterized by four or more of the following symptoms. So you don't have to have all of these, but you may have uh, a series of these. Some people might have all of these and some people might just have a few. But palpitations, pounding heart or accelerated heart rate can be one, sweating, trembling or shaking, sensations of shortness of breath or smothering, feeling like you're choking, uh, having chest pain or discomfort, nausea or abdominal distress, feeling dizzy, unsteady, lightheaded or faint, uh, having feelings of unreality, uh, derealization that's called, or being detached from yourself, fear of losing control or going crazy. Uh, fear of dying, uh, and numbness or tingling sensations, chills or hot flushes. So if you look at that list, and if you can pick out four of these symptoms, then you would be diagnosable, quote unquote, as having panic attacks. Now if we take a look at anxiety symptoms, these are a little different. Generally, anxiety intensifies over a period of time and is highly correlated to excessive worry. The symptoms of anxiety are very similar to the symptoms of panic attacks and may include muscle tension, disturbed sleep, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, restlessness, irritability, an increased startle response, increased heart rate, shortness of breath, and dizziness. So again, these some of these overlap, but um, Panic attack is, uh, is basically kind of an extreme form of, uh, of anxiety. You can think of it as, as being that way. Well, 
Here's why medications just don't cut it and can make things worse. First of all, there are two primary medical treatments for these problems, and those are medications and psychotherapy. And these methods don't necessarily address the underlying causes. Of course, medications can help, and if you need medications, then that's, that's great. But generally speaking, they are kind of a Band-Aid and don't really address the underlying cause. And of course, drugs also, all drugs, no matter what they are, have harmful side effects to the body. Some are more extreme than others, but uh, remember that all drugs are toxic, especially to the liver and the kidneys, because the liver and the kidneys are the detoxifying organs of the body. And so when you take a medication, and all medications are essentially a poison, when you take those, the liver has to break that down, and the kidneys have to eliminate that. And this is one of the reasons why, for those of you who have been on any fairly intense medications, they will have you come back every week sometimes, or even more often sometimes, to do tests on you to see if your liver is going to be able to tolerate that drug. And of course, we know that um, uh, death by medication is one of the leading causes of death in the country today. So. We can use the emotion code and the body code to get to the root of these problems, panic attacks and anxiety disorders, because the body itself is made of energy. And emotions, which are usually at the root of these problems, are also made of energy. And emotions can become trapped, or the energy of emotions can become trapped or stuck in the body. And these trapped emotions may lead to panic attacks and anxiety. Well, the emotion code is the fastest and easiest way to release these trapped emotions. Uh, this can be done at any distance, which we will demonstrate today on our webinar. And it's easily learned by anyone, regardless of age or background. The body code is the most advanced self-study course on energy healing that is available. And it allows access to the full subconscious database, which enables us to find any imbalance very rapidly. So having said all of that, what I would like to do now is actually take a look here at the body code. OK. This is what we call the body code mind map. I'll give you a chance to all catch up with me. There we go. And now not, not everyone has this, but what I want to show you is that um, we will be using this in a few minutes. But first of all, I'd like to show you how you can use the emotion code to find and release these uh, trapped emotions that are often at the root of anxiety and panic attacks. But if you're dealing with panic attacks, or if it's something that you have, uh, if that's why you're on the call, because it's a problem for you, I'd like to talk with you, and we'll tune in and see if we can figure out what those underlying causes are. OK, let's talk to Maggie. Maggie, are you there? Yes. What happens with me is I have um, been working with the emotion code and had really good results. Uh, for the past couple of years, I had a problem with blood pressure, and they've okay. given me all kinds of drugs, and I've had all kinds of reactions. But now I've been clearing a lot of things, and I um, am really fit and active, and I think that my blood pressure is normal. But as soon as you go to take it, I start to have an attack, a panic attack. I get into these sweats, and my face goes red, and my heart starts beating. And when they take it, of course, it's high. Hmm. So they want to give you drugs. Okay. So the panic so when, is so when you go to Okay, so when you go to take your blood pressure, you that's when you get a panic attack. Yes. Okay. And the doctor, okay. of course, doesn't understand that and just thinks I need more drugs. But my naturopath knows that it's not, and she says it's a reaction. So she's trying to help me do something. <laughs> okay. All right, well let's let's take a look at this. So Oftentimes, panic attacks have some kind of a trigger that will bring them about. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's something that's unusual. Sometimes uh, it can actually be anything, really. And 
so in, in a sense, when you have a specific trigger that brings about a sudden panic attack, then it's bordering uh, more on, on really being a phobia, but there, there's, there's an, a lot of overlap with these things. So let's take a look here. First of all, what we're going to do is just have a moment of silence. I'll ask for some help for us from upstairs, and we'll see if we can tune in and figure out what's going on. Okay, let's see if we've got a good connection going here with you. Can I act as proxy for you? Yes. Now what that means is, uh, the human body has this unique ability built right into it to set aside its own needs to act on behalf of someone else. And we call that working by proxy or acting as proxy for someone else. So I, I'm acting as proxy for you right now. Now what that means is that we have an energetic connection that's just been established. If I were to say, normally if I were to say my name is Brad, that is my first name, I would be strong. But right now if I say my name is Brad, I'm actually weak because my name right now is actually Maggie because I've my body has set aside its own <laughs> needs to act for you. Okay, so here we go. Let's ask: Is there uh, is there attractive emotion that we can release now that is contributing to the panic attack situation that you have when you go to take your blood pressure? And the answer is yes. Now I'm muscle testing myself to get these answers. So the answer is yes. So let's take a look and see what this is. Now here we're using the emotion code. So first of all, uh, we're looking at the emotion code chart here. You can see that there are two columns and six rows. And let's ask, first of all, what column this trapped emotion is in? Is it in column A or is it in column B? It's in column B. And is it in one of the odd rows, it's row one, three, or five? And the answer is no. So is it in one of the even rows? Uh, yes, is it in two or four? It's in four. So is the emotion depression or frustration? Is it indecisiveness or panic or taken for granted? And the answer that I'm getting on each one of these is actually no. Okay. So Maggie, you know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's inherited. So you have some kind of an inherited emotion and that's typically how we find these. The body will take us to a certain column in a certain row, and then the answer will be no, 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 no. So this inherited emotion, is it an inherited emotion of depression or frustration? Is it inherited indecisiveness or inherited panic? There's actually an inherited emotion of panic. Mm. Now, the way that we get these is at the moment of conception, either your mother or your father passes a little bit of energy to you and in the form of this emotional, uh, this trapped emotion, this emotional energy gets passed at the moment of conception. So let's see where this came from. When we find an inherited emotion like this, it, uh, it's necessary usually to figure out the genealogy of these. So did you get this from your father? No. Did you get this from your mother? Yes, I'm testing myself here, muscle testing myself. Did you got this from your mother? Did she get it from anybody earlier? Yes. Did she get it from her mother or from her father? It came from her father. And did he get it from anybody earlier? No. So it came from your mother's father, your maternal grandfather. Now, do, uh, do you do you remember him? Do you know anything about him? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was something that happened in his life that created this trapped emotion of panic before your mother was conceived. When she was conceived, he passed it to her. When you were conceived, she passed it to you. And that's how yeah. this works. Okay. Yeah. Do you know anything about his life that might have created panic oh, before your mom was grand, conceived? Yeah, my grandfather um, was sent to Canada to work on um, family farms when he was a young boy. So he, mm -hmm. he uh, was sent by his parents, so he was moved into a new country, into a province, and worked as a farm boy. So there was a lot of panic, I'm sure, around that okay. kind of thing. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's take a look here. And let's also ask now, Maggie, do you have any kids yourself? Yes, I do. How many kids? I have two of my own and two stepchildren. Okay, so those two of your own may have also received this energy from you when they were conceived. And let's yeah. ask if either one of them did, and the answer is yes. Did they both? No. But one of them did. Uh, did the older one, the younger one did? The younger one? 
Yep. Yeah, okay. That makes so, sense. That makes sense. Okay. So your younger child uh, picked up that energy as well. So what we're going to do here when we release this, and we can ask if we need to know more about this energy and uh, this inherited emotion, and the answer is no. So what we're going to do right now is release this energy. Now, I'm working as proxy for you by myself here, so what I'm going to do is take a magnet, and this is, I'm using one of our magnets that we sell from our store at Healer's Library, which is just the Emotion Code Magnetic Chart. And I'm going to pass this from my forehead over the top of my head to the back of my neck here ten times. And while I'm doing that, I'm holding an intention to release this energy from everybody, every soul that has, uh, that's been holding on to this energy, um, that youngest child of yours, you, and also your mother, and her father. Mm -hmm. And that's the intention here. And it's all about intention. That's how everything happens, how it all works. And so let's ask if we've released that uh, inherited emotion of panic from you. Yes. Did it also release from your mother and from your father? Now, is your mother still alive? No. No. Okay. And of course, her dad no, had, is gone as well. Mm -hmm. Right. She had a heart attack and died. <laughs> okay. Well, let's ask if we've also released this, did it release from your younger, uh, your younger child? And the answer there is yes as well. So we, we know that um, when we're releasing inherited emotions like this, there's never a problem with releasing them from the ancestors. No matter how right. many generations it may go back, it mm -hmm. always seems to release from all of them, which is an amazing thing. Whether they're living or dead, it doesn't seem to make any difference at all. Um, but in a case like this, we always like to check to see if that energy was released, in this case, from your younger child. Um, usually it will if your intention is, is clear. Sometimes it won't. and In those cases, you'll need to actually go ahead and release that from them. Right. Okay, so that's what showed up. So now using the, using the emotion code again, we can ask, is there another emotion, uh, trapped emotion, that we can release from you that... Uh, that is contributing to these panic attacks that you have when uh, when you go to take your blood pressure or when someone goes to take your blood pressure. And the answer that I'm getting there is no. And remember that one of the things we saw uh, in the uh, in the opening slides here was that the was that panic attacks seem to have some kind of an inherited component. Okay, mm -hmm. and of course. Um, Medically, they don't really understand that, but I think that a lot of the time what happens is there are uh, these inherited energies that, uh, that are an underlying big reason for that, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me know how you do, Maggie. Send us an email. Um, you can contact us through the support system at Healer's Library. Okay. And uh, let me show you how that works here really quick. Actually, I, I've just become certified. Oh, great. So, so, yeah, I'll be able to do that. Yeah, and okay, I, wonderful. Yeah, to, yeah let I us know. A lot of this stuff, I just I hadn't found this one, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes it's good to, um, sometimes that happens because uh, there's a learning that needs to take place on yes. a call like this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, and so sometimes right things now, don't is, come up right away. Right now, my face is beet red and hot like it gets. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So something's, something's happening. Yeah, something is definitely happening. Okay. Well, do send us an email and let us know how you do with that, okay? I will. I will. And we thank will go ahead and take our next person. So thank you, Maggie. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye now. All right. Let's take a look. Okay. So hopefully we've got, we've got a lot of hands up. We'll try to work with as many of you as, you, as we can. Remember, if your hand is up, I'm going to ask you if you're dealing with a panic, with panic attacks or anxiety disorder. If you are, we want to work with you. If you're not, then it, you know, we're going to want to work with somebody else. Just, just so you know, you know so keep that in mind. Um, okay, let's take a look at. Uh, let's see if we can talk to Janet here. Janet, are you on? Yes, I am. There we go. I can hear you really well. Great. Okay, okay. I have. Uh... I have increasing anxiety. There's a lot of um, chaos in my family. I have two children who are adopted that have 
a, a major trauma history. It has affected the entire family. Um, and I also have a, a bit of a trauma history as well. So, but what's okay. happening is when we, uh, when one kid gets anxious, in fact, this happened this morning on the way, the, the, my children were getting ready for school. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the kids had a major angry outburst. And I tend to go into um, increasing anxiety when this kind of thing happens. And then everybody gets pulled into that. It's, it's, it's not nice. Anyway, and so I get uh, the classic symptoms, um, you know, the increasing heart rate and had more and more shortness of breath and um, that kind of thing. So, and even some pain in my chest. Okay. So, and I have been doing, personally doing some emotion code and Natalie has been helping me as well. But this is interesting because this anxiety is uh, recently become worsening, <laughs> I would say. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's usually the family dynamics that uh, um, are the trigger. Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. We'll... Um... We'll just have a moment of silence and I'll ask for some help from upstairs and we'll tune in and see what we can do here. Hold on. Okay, let's see if we have a good connection here. Can I act as proxy for you? Yes, okay. So if I say my name is Janet, I get a strong answer. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look here and see Janet. Let's, um, let's ask, first of all, if... Um, we have the body code available to us. Let's ask if, um, first of all, let's ask, is there a trapped emotion that is, uh, that we can release now that is underlying this, uh, these, ang uh, these panic attacks for you? And the answer that I'm getting on that is no. Let's go back out to the body code main map. Now, the body code is this uh, this system, this self-study course. It's all that, that uh, I believe is the most advanced self-study course on energy healing that is available on the planet. Uh, but it also is this mind map. And what you're looking at here, for those of you who don't know, this is a uh, this is a, a mind map that has 118 linked maps to it. So every time you see a little blue button here. Uh, what you're looking at is another map. There's another map behind every little blue button here, basically. And so if we click on any of these topics, it takes us to another map. And so what I'm going to do here, Janet, is I'm going to ask, in your case, now typically when a person has panic attacks or anxiety, Usually there are trapped emotions that are underlying that, but there may be other things. And so I'm going to use the body code mind map here and show you how we can use this to dig deeper and maybe discover some underlying cause. So here's how this map works. Basically in the same way that we ask if a trapped emotion is in column A or column B, we can ask if there is an underlying cause of this anxiety for you and we can ask if it's on the right or the left. And the, your subconscious mind will tell us, because the subconscious mind of every individual is tuned into the database of universal intelligence, you might call it. And so your subconscious mind knows perfectly well what's on this map, even if you've never seen it before. Even if you don't speak English, even if, uh, even if you're blind or deaf, or it doesn't matter your subconscious mind is tuned into this and, uh, and that we've proven that over and over and over again for many, many years now. So let's ask, is there an underlying reason for this anxiety that, um, that you've been dealing with in these situations lately that seems to be coming up for you? And the answer is yes. And so we'll, we'll ask, is this reason on the right side? Now you may have more than one reason, but the subconscious mind will give us one reason at a time kind of like a, a Pez dispenser will give you one candy at a time. The subconscious will give us one imbalance at a time, and so we just go with one at a time. So this, this first imbalance, is it on the right side of our chart here? And the answer is no. So it's on the left side of the chart. Okay, so is it some kind of energy? Yes, it is. Is it emotional? No. Is it post-traumatic? No. Is it some kind of an allergy or an intolerance? No. Is it some sort of mental energy? Yes. Okay, so if we click on mental, the little button there, you can see that it brings up another page. 
And this page also has a bunch of different little blue buttons. And so every little blue button or icon on this page takes us to another map. But to find out very rapidly what the underlying problem here is, we can ask, is this on the left side of our chart here? And the answer is no. So is it on the right side of the chart? The answer is yes. Is it some kind of an image? An image is like a picture held in the subconscious mind. The answer there is no. Is it a broadcast message, which is an energy that your body will send out to other people, like kick me or I'm an idiot, things like that. Is it a need to move the past? Is it a will to die? It's actually what we call a will to die energy. So if we click on this link, it takes us to another page. And then this other page uh, says that sometimes we wish that we were dead. And the energy of this feeling can become lodged in the body and can create continual imbalance. So we can dig deeper on this if we need to. Let's ask, do we need to know more about this will to die energy? And the answer is actually yes. Okay. So where I would go with this is I would ask, first of all, how old are you, Janet? 54. 54. That's a good age. That's the same is age as me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there. That was a good year, 57. Good year for Chevrolet's. So let's ask, um, okay, when did this occur? This will to die energy, when did this get stuck in your body? Was it earlier than age 30, between 30 and 40, between 40 to 50, between 40, it's between 40 to 50, between 40 to 45 or 46, 47, around 48 or 49. It shows up around age 49. So roughly five years ago, does that ring any kind of bell? Uh, well, um, that what I was talking about with um, this family chaos, this has been going on for a while, and probably uh, it would be inclusive of that time, yeah. Okay. Okay. And so do we need to know more about this? And the answer is no. So let's go ahead and release this. Once again, we can release this energy with just three rolls down the governing meridian. And since I'm acting as proxy, if you were standing here in front of me, um, I would have you turn around and I would run a magnet down from the, uh, probably from your, the base of your neck down to your low back three times to release this energy. But since I'm acting as proxy for you, I, I can release this energy on me by just passing the magnet from my forehead over the top of my head to the back of my neck. Just a few times and let's see if we've released that energy. And the answer is yes. Now. The way the body code works is every time we clear something, uh, we always go back to the main page, which is right here. Give that a second to catch up. There we go. And now let's ask, is there another underlying reason for this, uh, for this situation, for the anxiety uh, that you're having? Yes. Okay. Once again, is it on the right side of our chart here? It's on the left. So is it some kind of energy? Yes. Is it emotional? No. Is it post-traumatic? No. Is it some kind of an allergy or an intolerance? No. Is it mental? No. Is it offensive? Yes. Okay. So this is, this is interesting. We'll click on this button here. And the offensive energies are energies that come to us from, usually from another person. Okay. One of these is courting where we can be corded energetically to another person. You can see how the people in the picture here are actually corded one to another. Energy will flow mm -hmm. along that cord. Of course, that's an invisible thing that we don't see. Is that what this is about? And the answer is no. And so is it a post-hypnotic suggestion? And the answer is no. Post-hypnotic suggestions often uh, come to us from, most often from listening to um, music that is that doesn't test good for us. Music and a lot of the music, of course, today doesn't test good. It hasn't tested good for a long time. Most of the music is not good, and so these post-hypnotic suggestions are little phrases that get put into the subconscious mind. And these can actually be found and can be released. And if you get enough of these accumulated, you will actually become what we would refer to as being inverted which means that um, you have so much negativity going on, so many negative statements in your subconscious mind that you actually, uh, your, your whole entire value system becomes flipped upside down so that you will test strong for evil, for example, and weak for good and 
it's really a, an interesting thing, and we we see that um, with people who listen to a lot of music. It's not uncommon for them to become inverted. So is that what it is? And the answer is no. So there's some kind of a saboteur then, and that I'm getting a yes on that. Now, what a saboteur is, we'll click on this button right here. And this is this is one of the most exotic things that we see in the body code. A saboteur is usually some kind of an energy weapon that has been placed by someone else into your energy field. And when we hear people say things like, well, you know, that uh, that guy really stabbed me in the back. You know, we, we talk about that in uh, metaphorical terms. But what we've discovered is that sometimes there's actually a real correlation to that that um, – sometimes uh, has to be found and released, and it will tend to cause pain and irritation of tissues and so on. So uh, this is kind of a, an unusual thing, but this is what's showing up for you. So let's ask what kind of a saboteur this is. Is it, um, and, and again, remember that the subconscious mind, to the subconscious mind, everything is possible, anything is possible. And in the same way that you can have a heart wall, made out of iron or glass or steel, and maybe it's a mile thick or 10 miles or whatever, in that same way, you can have these energy weapons that can be placed into your body's field. And I've seen cases where people would not get well until one of these was discovered and then released. And so let's ask if this is a, it's a symbolic thing, but, uh, but what is it? Is it, a, is it something that's made of metal or, and I'm getting a no on that, is it, um, is it something that's made of rope? It's some kind of a rope. Now, I've seen cases before where people had, uh, had a saboteur where their, uh, for example, their, their feet might be bound or there might be a noose around their neck. And so you never know. This is, like I said, this is kind of exotic, but bear with me here. So this is rope of some kind. And so is this tying your hands together or is it around your neck or around your feet? Is it, um, okay, is it around your body in some way? Yes, okay, so it's not around your feet. Is it around your knees? Is it, um, we want to try to figure out where this rope is. Is it above your waist? Yes. It's not around your neck. Is it around your head? It's around, no. It's not around, okay, it's actually around your, uh, the rope symbolically, the rope is actually kind of in your mouth wrapping around the back of your head, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so how did this get there? You have to be a little bit, you have to just allow your intuition to kind of tell you what's going on. Does that make sense to you? <clears throat> well, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I talk, I'm a chatterer, and uh, I think uh, I've been told to shut up quite a bit in that just hurts me like a knife it really does uh, so I'm <laughs> just wondering if it's uh, related to that kind of energy mm -hmm. uh, probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> it probably is <laughs> yeah. so uh, so someone placed that energy there and the thing is they had no idea that they did it although these can also be placed by yourself in the same way that you could inflict a wound on yourself but let's ask um, this uh, was this place there, this rope, was this put around you by somebody else? Yes. Uh, by a female? No. By a male? Yes. Do we need to know more about it? And the answer is no. Uh, we could figure out exactly who, but the problem is it, um, it doesn't really help you, really, because these can come from anybody. But um, if people have told you to shut up in the past, it, it, could, it could have been one of them. That would be the most likely thing. Okay? So, now somehow... Uh, so you say it's, it's more likely... It's more likely to come from the past than uh, a present situation? Oh, it could easily be from present. We can find out when this came, uh, when this was yeah. put around you. When did you pick up the saboteur? Was it within the last year? Uh, yes. Within the last six months? No. Uh, so seven, within eight, within nine, within, well, I would say sometime within like the last ten months, probably around ten months ago is what shows up. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. So let's ask, um, do we need to know more about this? The answer is no. And so let's go ahead and release this. Now what we do is, once again, 
take a magnet. Okay? And by the way, if you don't have a magnet, you can use your fingertips. Uh, you can also use a zero-point device. Um, for example, um, the zero-point wands, uh, a lot of those work fine, zero-point global, omega, and so on. So let's go ahead and we'll go from the forehead over the top of the head to the back of the neck. And, and of course, our intention is we're releasing that rope that's been around your neck. Okay, or around your, around your face, you know, kind of in between your teeth, basically, is where it was. So let's ask, do you still have that saboteur? And the, the answer there is no, okay? So once again, this is kind of uh, one of the most exotic things that we see with the body code, but I have seen this work in cases where nothing else would. And so you just never know. And that's the, uh, that's the beauty, really, of the body code, is that it can take you to places that you otherwise would just never, ever be able to figure out. Let me ask you something right now. If you move your head and neck around and you just kind of open and close your jaw, does it, do, do things feel any different to you than how they were feeling a minute ago? Because a lot of the time people will say, they'll report that they feel some change. At this point. Uh, I'm not sure I can tell, but I, I, I have a problem with clenching and grinding my teeth at nighttime. So I'll be interested to see uh, if I see any difference there. Okay. Okay, absolutely. Well, good. Keep me posted, and uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, send us an email and let us know. Um, let us know how you do, okay? And let's just okay. check and see. Before we let you go, let's ask, is there another underlying reason uh, or another underlying imbalance that we can release from you that is creating this anxiety for you? And the answer that I'm getting right now is no. So you've done some emotion code work. And looks like this is one of those strange things that needed to be cleared so that you could kind of get to the next level. So let me know how you do, okay? Beautiful. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you, Janet. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. I'm going to mute everybody now for just a second. And uh, let's see if we can talk to Jennifer. Jennifer, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. There we go. I can hear you. You might want to try speaking up just a little bit more. Yes. There we go. Okay. Jennifer, yes. tell me, how can we help you? What's going on? Um, well, I've been suffering from um, severe anxiety about um, going back to work. And I've, um, I've just suffered a lot of um, abuses at work. And um, I'm finding it really difficult to get on the phone and, and call to try to get work and I, 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 you know, I don't work at this place anymore and sometimes when I drive by I get severe panic attacks when I'm near the okay. area and um, I've done some work on it but it's still not gone away. Okay. <sighs> All right. Take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> Hang in there. All right. Let's take a look. First of all, we'll, um, we'll have a moment of silence and I'll ask for some help for us. Okay, here we go. Now, the, the, reason why, the reason why I do that, why I take a moment of, of silence and ask for some help is because I believe that all of this, uh, these healing methods that I practice and teach have all come from up above, and I find that, uh, and I found this when I was in practice uh, 22 years now, in one form or another, that um, when I would ask for help, it just really made things work a lot better. And there were times when I was in practice where people would occasionally come in with something that I didn't understand or that I didn't know what to do with or that I'd never seen before. And there were times when, as I would say that silent prayer to God for help, that information would sometimes just flood into my mind about what they needed and what was wrong with them. And so, uh, so I found that it really, really helps. So, Jennifer, let's take a look. And it also keeps me humble because this, this stuff is not about me. I'm just here to, to teach it and to show all of you what you can do. And it keeps my ego out of it, see, because uh, I like to give the credit where the credit really is due. And so it's like I tell people, I just work here. So I just work here. So here we go, Jennifer. Let's see. Let's ask, is there an underlying imbalance 
and we'll we'll go ahead since we have the body code map up here. We'll go ahead and use this. Is there an underlying imbalance that we can um, that we can release that is contributing to this uh, to these panic attacks for you? And the answer is definitely yes. So once again, we'll ask: Is this imbalance? It's probably going to be on the left side of the chart, uh, but you never know. And the motto of the of the holistic doctor is: anything can cause anything. See, and so. We try not to have any preconceived ideas. We try not to direct things. We just try to be really open to what, it, what the answers might be. So, but it's probably something over here because the energy area is over here. So let's ask, um, is this underlying imbalance on the left side of the chart? And the answer is yes. Okay, so here we go. Now remember, you may have more than one thing, but right now your body is saying, well, yes, here's, here's thing number one. Okay, maybe there is only one thing. I don't know, but... There's definitely one thing. And so is it in the energy area? And the answer is yes. Is it emotional? And the answer is no. Is it post-traumatic? And the answer there is yes. So we'll click on the little link here. And it takes us into another map. And this map shows us four different possibilities. Well, we could test every single one of these. But rather than doing that, let's just ask if this imbalance is on the right side of this map. And the answer is no. So it's on the left side. So is it psychic trauma? Is that what it is? And the answer is yes. So we'll click on this button here, and it takes us to yet another map. So you can see why there are 118 maps here that are all linked. But um, having them available this way uh, in a web browser is the ultimate way to get to this information because we can drill down so rapidly and figure out what it is. Well, now, Jennifer, do you know what a psychic trauma is? Um, yeah, it's my two things emotionally happen to you and they become trapped in your body. Yes, exactly right. And uh, I discovered this after 9-11, 2001. I was in practice then and people were coming in with uh, emotional baggage that I'd never seen before. It was something different. And so like you said, when you feel two or, or sometimes even more, but it's usually two emotions simultaneously, they get struck, they get, they get, uh, I'll just say they get wrapped together or stuck together into one ball of energy. And for all practical purposes, it's really just like a trapped emotion. But instead of being just one pure emotional energy, like anger, instead it's anger and resentment or sadness and grief or frustration and loss, things like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask if we need to know more about this psychic trauma, and the answer is yes. Okay, so here we go. Now, we do teach this psychic trauma at our seminars, and it's also in the Emotion Code uh, DVD sets and so on, and, and we teach it on, online. But it's not in the Emotion Code book. So this may be new for some of you. So what we'll do is we'll go back to uh, our Emotion Code chart. And let's ask, first of all, the first thing that I would do in a case like this, this psychic trauma, let's ask, what, what's the first emotion here? Uh, is it in column A or in column B? It's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows or an even row? Is it in row 2 or row 4 or row 6? It's in row 6. Is the emotion pride? Is it shame or shock? Is it unworthy or worthless? Okay. The very last one on the list shows up. It's worthless is one of the emotions. Now, the interesting thing about this, you see, is that if you're suffering from panic attacks, uh, for example, you might think, well, it's got to be panic. But the interesting thing is that as we have found working with people who have panic attacks and anxiety, sometimes panic doesn't even show up. A lot of the time it does. But um, sometimes it's other things that trigger it. So you never know. You can't have any preconceived ideas about what you're going to come up with on this chart. So the first thing that's coming up for you here is worthless. Now, there is another emotion here, at least one, uh, that's wrapped into this psychic trauma. Let's see what it is. Is it listed in the chart here in column B? No. So it's in column A. Is it in one of the odd rows? No. So it's in an even row. Is it in row 2? No. Is it in row 4? No. Is it in row 6? Yes. Okay. So um, is it humiliation, jealousy? Is it longing or lust? Overwhelm. Okay, overwhelm is the second one. So... This row, row six, these emotions are produced by the glands and the sexual organs. And so it's these bottom two right here, okay? Overwhelm and worthless. 
Okay, now let's see if we need to know more about this. And the answer is yes. Okay. So what I would do next is I would ask Jennifer, how old are you right now? Uh, 51. 51. Okay, so let's find out when this occurred. This could have occurred at any time in your life. We have no idea. And we're not going to we're not going to assume that it occurred at work. It might have, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. Could have occurred when you were a kid. Who knows? So let's ask. When did this happen to you? When did when did you pick up this psychic trauma? Did it occur earlier than age 30, or between 30 and 40? Between 40 to 50? Yes. Did it occur between 40 to 45 or 46? 40, 40. I'm getting age 47. Okay. 47. Okay. Now, so this may or may not have anything to do with you know, with work, but nevertheless, uh, we don't make any preconceived uh, judgments about that. So uh, any idea what might have created this around age 47? Um, yeah, I could have a good idea what it would be. Okay. Okay. So do you want to just think about that thing, whatever? Yes. Was that some... Okay. You th now, here's one of the beautiful things about the emotion code is that in a case like this, Jennifer can just think about whatever that was that she thinks might have created this psychic trauma. And what I can do is ask, is, is that what actually created this? And the answer sometimes is yes and sometimes no. In this case, the answer is yes. So that's what created this. So, what, so just out of curiosity, was this about work? Um, yeah, it was two things, actually, work and home. Okay, work and home. Well, there you go. Okay, so do we need to know more about this? And the answer is no. So in this case, uh, or at this point, let's go ahead and release this. And again, a psychic trauma is just like a trapped emotion. As far as releasing it, we just go three times over the governing meridian. And in this case, I'm going from my forehead to the back of my neck three times. And let's ask if we've released that energy. And the answer is yes. Okay, so we cleared that. So now what we do is we go back to page one. We always, anytime we clear anything, we always go back to page one here in the body code and we ask, okay, is there another underlying reason for this severe anxiety, the panic attacks that you have when you're driving near your work and so on or thinking about going back there and so on? And the answer that I'm getting right now is actually no. So that means one or two things. When the body says no, it may mean no, I'm completely done. You've cleared everything we need to clear. Or it may mean, nope, you've cleared everything you can clear for now, and there may be something that may appear or well up to the surface within another day or so. Um, so it's one of those two things. But is there anything else we can clear on you right now? The answer is no. Now listen, I have seen many, many times where clearing one thing has completely knocked out a person's panic attacks, uh, even phobias, um, anxiety. Sometimes one thing is all that it takes. Sometimes it might take clearing two or three things, and sometimes it's a little more complicated than that even. But um, but I've seen many cases where it's just one thing. In fact, one of the um, uh, one of the most interesting things that happened to me when I was in practice was I had a uh, a patient who was suffering from phobias. Uh, well, a particular phobia. She had a phobia of um, earthquakes. And it was creating panic attacks for her on almost a daily basis. And what would happen is she didn't really necessarily know what was going on initially. She would just have a panic attack, and they would occur at different times of the day. And eventually she figured out what was going on because they coincided with um, earth, little earthquakes that would happen. We were living in Southern California at the time. And so if you live in Southern California, you know that um, there are little earthquakes that happen you know, really frequently in different places, and they'll announce those on the news, and, uh, but nobody can really feel those. But she was so tuned in somehow to these earthquakes that she'd have a panic attack when there would be one somewhere. Well, what we found was in 1971, I believe it was, there was a, uh, an earthquake in Southern California in Silmar. She was about 12 years old, and their home was right near the epicenter center of the earthquake and their home was pretty much demolished and she was terrified and the trapped emotion of terror that became lodged in her body somehow tuned her in to the geological geopathic stresses of the earth such that when she when when an earthquake would happen somewhere within probably a hundred mile radius she'd have a panic attack and so we cleared that one emotion 
and she never had another panic attack. In fact, we went through a, a fairly major earthquake a year or so after that, and she sailed through that with no problem. Didn't even have a panic attack at that one, and she could feel that one. So you just never know. So let, let me check one more time, Jennifer. Is there okay. is there anything else we can work on or clear right now to address this issue for you? And the answer I'm getting is no. So what I'd like you to do is uh, send us an email and okay. um, and let us know how you do. In fact, let me show you how to communicate with us here really quickly. If you go to Healer's Library, you'll see at the top here,